lovely to have a uh, an expert in music and in sound, uh, Mr. Alex Doman. And uh, Alex, I hope I didn't butcher your last name. Uh, Doman, Doman is how I typically say Doman. it, but that's okay. pretty close. I, guess I gave it a Spanish <laughs> um, accented uh uh, version or something, uh, but what's you know what's cool about Alex for our audience, uh, he is the founder and CEO of Advanced Brain Technologies, and uh, they're doing some very interesting work, and he's also also the co-author of um, of a book that's called Healing at the Speed of Sound. So Alex, um, wow, that sounds really interesting. I have to confess, I have not yet gotten through your book. I'm looking forward to doing that. Hopefully this summer while I'm on vacation. Um, and uh, what would uh, what got you into uh, into healing at the speed of sound? Well, I you know my my interests in you know sound and music is is a way to advance uh, people's lives. Uh, started early in childhood, Dan. I I uh, grew up in a family that's been in the in the field of brain injury rehabilitation and advancing brain performance in people for three generations, dating back to the 1940s. So I I grew up. Um, you know, very immersed in the, the world of brain plasticity and, and advan advancing people's lives and personally had an interest in the therapeutic applications of sound in music, um, initially investigating some of the research actually coming out of Europe uh, in the listening therapy field and very kind of prescriptive specialized music programs uh, being used to help people with a variety of conditions and, and needs. Uh, began clinically researching that in the early 90s and uh, then brought a team of professionals and uh, engineers and musicians, clinicians and scientists to create kind of the best in class uh, therapeutic music products there were that were that were evidence based and uh, that was 1998 and here we are today so we're having a great time with it wow so so in a few words if uh, you, you could say uh, you're you guys specialize in evidence based uh, therapy sound therapy using music would that be a would that be correct? Yeah, so we, we create evidence-based therapeutic music programs um, that are designed to advance people's brains. Okay, that's cool. So, so for the layperson out there, um, you know, I think we all probably recognize that, hey, you know, there are certain, certain types of music, you know, kind of makes me feel good, and, and uh, we, all, we all associate music with parties with, uh, you know, here in Spain with the fiestas, um, not as much with the siesta, although you need the siesta to enjoy the fiesta. Um, That's right. <laughs> it's kind of a, a, a those African power naps. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They, so, so how would uh, um, scientifically, but in in a simple, could you give us a simple explanation of uh, of you know how this might help with you know a, a person out there who's listening? Well, you know, I, I think a, a great place to start is to recognize that the brain is literally wired for sound. So the first sense to fully develop uh, in utero is the sense of hearing and balance of, of the auditory system. So our first uh, form of learning happens in the womb through the sounds that we experience from our, our mother and from our environment. And our ears are really our windows to the world. You know, they give us information about whether or not we're safe. Uh, they help us understand what somebody's communicating. They are, language is uniquely human in our ability to express ourselves to one another. And all of these things relate to sound. And what's been really exciting just in the past 15 years in the neuro neurosciences is um, the use of functional brain imaging to actually see how music acts on the brain. And what the neuroscientists are, in fact, finding is that music impacts more brain areas simultaneously than anything else we experience in life. Wow. So music okay. is truly kind of in us and part of who we are. Wow, that's fascinating. You know, that, that brings to mind a, uh, something from the, uh, the world of Spanish music. Uh, uh, in the world of flamenco, they have a term they call duende. And Duane Day is, uh, you may be aware of this word, um, I know that you had worked with a Spanish guitarist, I believe, um, 
And uh, what this is about is, is sort of um, when if you're at a performance of with a master guitarist and, and a flamenco dancer, uh, you oftentimes have someone doing percussion uh, sitting on a, a top, what looks like kind of a box, really, although it's more complicated than that. Um, and it's sort of almost like they go into a trance. And, you know, and it doesn't always happen, but, uh, it's, you know, we might say in sports performance, people might say the zone, you know, or, or you know, it doesn't have to be sports. But is that, uh, w is that something that connects with what you guys are doing? Well, well, it does. You know, the artist you brought up, uh, Nacho Armani, is a, a, a native from Madrid, and he's a, a flamenco percussionist. Uh, also happens to be a brilliant guitarist and pianist and vocalist. But wow. percussion, you know, percussion is his uh, first love. And, you know, what you're describing, and he's always talked about in flamenco, is that the percussion is the support. It, it lays the bed and the foundation for the flamenco dance and flamenco guitar that may be there, and, and it's that that reference point that you have. And when you kind of mention getting into peak state or into the zone, I've I've watched Nacho solo and with another percussionist kind of dial into this transcendental state. And they're just completely dialed in, and it is as if they've become a human metronome, yeah. right? And just totally in sync with the body rhythms and what's happening in the environment. And, you know, interestingly, that's a state that a lot of us can achieve even just listening to the right music without even performing it for ourselves. Yeah, and that's good news for people like me that have two left feet. <laughs> that <laughs> and you my, and me both. Yeah, my wife is actually a uh, gifted dancer, and uh, I don't know how she manages to uh, manage to get interested in me. But uh, maybe because I could laugh about my uh, my lack of <laughs> lack of my weaknesses. <laughs> so, she must have seen your potential, Dan. Yeah, yeah. That's well. That's good. That's you know, women like challenges. <laughs> no. All right. Sir. So, Alex. Um, now I understand you guys do a lot of um, a lot of your work also is uh, uh, or some of your work is geared toward helping uh, helping young people helping children. So we may have parents out there who are listening. And uh, what what are some of the things? Uh, how much you know what you guys are doing? Um, could you give us an, you know maybe a, just make up a, a case study you know with a John Doe kind of case? If could you do could you do that for us? Yeah, well, let, let's uh, you know, let's do John Doe, and then let's do Sarah Doe, the daughter, and, yeah. and maybe kind of look at a look at a two. So you know, John Doe, maybe a, a forty-something guy like myself, um, who uh, is suffering from stress from work and career pressures, um, maybe experiencing uh, a little uh, kind of unrecognized anxiety and irritability. Uh, noticing that he's not sleeping very well, kind of lethargic in the morning, and not as sharp as he has been or would like to be. So in in his case, what we would do is first of all, take a look at what are your priorities? What are the things we want to get right uh, in, in your life? And then based on understanding that and how much time do you have to commit in your lifestyle to actually train your brain with sound and music. And once we figure that out, we prioritize um, his areas of brain focus. So we look at executive function, communication, right. uh, stress response, auditory processing, creative expression, uh, motor skills. So we look at all these areas and we prioritize them kind of one to seven, what's most important in your life today. Then based on that, we actually recommend a very specific personalized therapeutic listening program using music that's specially engineered, uh, composed and recorded to challenge these areas in the brain with listening exercises. So uh, this individual would put on headphones once or twice a day for 15 minutes uh, at pretty regular set times, five days a week, and then go through a very, very uh, progressive uh, brain training protocol using sound and music. And what we'd be looking for is to begin to see um, stress resilience improve. 
looking toward improving those insomnia issues, uh, waking more refreshed, being more mentally alert in the afternoon. And the, these are the kind of things that we're going to see happen as a result of what we're doing with these uh, interventions. And we have very specific protocols to do that. Now, he may also have a daughter that's um, struggling uh, with learning challenges and is not getting the grades she'd like in school, uh, is frustrated because she doesn't understand what the teacher is saying. Maybe she has some self-esteem issues related to her learning challenges and difficulty getting along with peers. So there's social issues that are involved too. And, you know, maybe this is a, a 12 year old girl, you know, a, a young girl that's kind of in that transition from primary to middle school yes. and dealing with hormonal changes. And, you know, that's a pretty typical scenario that we'll work with. And much like her father, we'll look at where are the deficits where are the strengths, where are our priorities, then she'll get a different personalized music protocol specifically to help in her areas so that we begin to see uh, a jump in academic performance, improved attention, that she starts understanding more of the teacher's instructions. She's picking up the social cues of what's happening with her peers and begins to interact with them more appropriately and builds a, a self-confidence and begins blossoming uh, from this from this experience you know and generally the process stand for these programs are generally about a six month commitment of 15 to 30 minutes a day five days a week to get in uh, address some of the underlying issues give the brain the stimulation and the training that it needs to advance forward wow fascinating stuff now is this something someone would need to physically come into your offices or is it something they can do you know over the internet, um, or how does that work? Great question, Dan. So we're we're in the U.S. We're based in Ogden, Utah, and uh, that's near Salt Lake City. And the great news is, you never have to come to our offices and see us to do this. Uh, we actually have a network of several thousand licensed healthcare practitioners and educators in over forty countries that are trained and certified in our protocols. So um, some of our programs are generally accessible at our website at advancedbrain.com. We call those self-directed. So there are different protocols and uh, music albums that you can just access directly from the website and get started on your own. Uh, or you go with our professional programs, uh, the listening program and in time where a trained coach will work with you either kind of live one-on-one -on -one or through online telecoaching yeah. to get you started and oversee what you're doing. And uh, traditionally, the distribution was on CDs. Uh, we know CDs are now uh, becoming a thing of the past and are a thing of the past for uh, many generations already. Uh, then we do preloaded media players that have the music protocols on them. So someone actually gets a, an iPod with a high-quality music library pre-installed and very high-quality headphones that are sent to them and then they're coached to use it. Um, but where we're now today and in the future, uh, we've created an online uh, platform that actually streams the protocols to your iPhone, to your Android device, or to your computer or tablet. So it's actually a subscription service called the Listening Program Online. Wow. Now, is that a, is that a separate website? or? It, it is. That is tlp.com advancedbrain.com right okay and this is and people could probably find with those those are probably cross-linked on your main web uh, they will be soon right now they're not cross-linked so they'd be uh, they'd go to advancedbrain.com to kind of get the overview and access to most programs and then tlp.advancedbrain.com to explore the online subscription services right right well, this is fascinating. This this reminds me a little bit about a, uh, a conversation I had uh, years ago um, uh, with in the luxury travel business. We had some customers who uh, were um, were executives with a uh, a major um, advertising and marketing company out of New York, um, and uh, so they were talking about the use of music with their advertising and how important. And they were split testing the music. Uh, to, uh, to, to looking at, obviously, at uh, sales response, and uh, it was fascinating stuff. So, well, music, 
music drives emotion and advertising is all about evoking an emotion to uh, call somebody to act and, you know, buy now, get get what's yeah. right. In front of you. And actually the, the science of, of sound, you know, in branding, uh, in, in an audio brand, uh, in television commercial commercials and creating a sound signature that's associated with an experience because the brain is so driven emotionally and is driven by emotional memory, right? So yes. you have a catchy tune, um, we're going to recognize it and associate it with that brand. And the more we hear it, the more we want to be a part of it. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that is, it's, it's very powerful stuff. Uh, so, um, so I guess people who are, you know, people, a lot of people maybe think, maybe sort of recognizing, wow, you know, this is uh, powerful stuff, but why, why does it, or it seems to me that, you know, this is an area that the average person, even in the healthcare field, probably overlooks, um, at least that, you know, it appears that way to me. Would that be your experience as well? Dan, I love that you used the term overlooks, because I think if we could see sound in music, it would be more in our consciousness, but it, it's okay. invisible, right? Yeah. So, you know, and, and I'll take an example. Uh, just a few years ago, the World Health Organization published a report after a large study in Europe. And the study was looking at the impact of traffic noise on the health of citizens in the EU. And as an outcome of that report, the World Health Organization stated that noise pollution was the second leading cause of environmental ill health to Europeans. Wow. Now, if we could see that sound pollution, like the air pollution I used to see living in Los Angeles over 20 years ago, where yeah. it was right in front of your hand, we wouldn't tolerate it. But we've almost become, we've become habituated to the noise in our world. And what we're not understanding is that that noise has extremely deleterious effects. And the biggest downside of noise in our life is stress. Noise is a major stressor. So if we're chronically stressed and don't realize it, or maybe we do realize it from the noise, especially in a very, living in a city, I was in Manhattan uh, just last week, and I was staying on the Upper West Side, and I uh, tried Air Airbnb for the first time and rented this cute little apartment for a couple of nights. And the noise uh, coming off the city, uh, out of the city and from the apartment above, the radiator that was clacking, I mean, it was loud and I couldn't sleep. So right. I could function well the next day. You have millions of people living in environments like this, and that's a daily occurrence. Yes. So you get used to it, but that doesn't mean it's not still bad for us. So I don't think that noise is really in our consciousness. We're fortunate to see more awareness of it. And another thing bring, bringing awareness is that with the uh, increased use of portable digital media and iPods, uh, media players, not to point out iPod, but just digital media right. players in general, we're plugged in to our headphones hours and hours a day because we have little devices with long battery life. We're playing hours of music directly into our ears without any relief, and we're seeing a phenomenon now called music-induced hearing loss. Oh, wow. The people are actually uh, creating hearing loss in, in and of themselves because of their music listening habits. Yes. So that's, that's the second big health factor that we need to pay attention to is hearing loss increases related to sound exposure. Yeah, fascinating stuff. So music or, or hearing induced or music induced uh, hearing, hearing loss. loss. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I remember as a child, uh, there was it, there was a, a uh, there was a bar that was uh, that had live music um, Friday and Saturday and sometimes Sundays. And it was just a block away from our house. Uh, and this was back, this was in the late 60s, early 70s, and it was really loud. Now, I remember my mother telling us, you know, don't go, don't walk on that side of the street because you'll, you'll lose your hearing. <laughs> Good for your mom. <laughs> yeah, she was on, on the right track there. She, she actually works with uh, childhood, um, childhood, she's a childhood development uh, specialist, psychologist, oh. and so I'm, I'm going to 
probably get her to ask her to or suggest that she watch this interview. She probably gets bored with a lot of the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, it you know, it's and it's not all bad news, Dan. You know, there's a lot of things that we can do to be proactive for our for our sound health, for the fitness of, of our brain from a sound perspective. And I think one is just first to be aware. Be aware. Noise has an impact of us. And kind of do a sound audit. You know, let's pay attention to the sounds in the room where we sleep. You know, the room where we sleep should be 35 decibels or quieter in order not to have sleep disruption from the sound in our environment. And how do we know that? You know, we grab our smartphone, we download a free decibel meter app, and we monitor the noise level in our bedroom. Well, once we get a baseline there, if we find things that are noisy, we can remove, remove them, and we'll get a better night's sleep. You know, we look at the sound in the workspace where we are, where our kids are in class, or where we worship. You know, I've had people contact me after reading Healing at the Speed of Sound saying, can you talk to my pastor and, you know, explain to him that the sound level at our, at our uh, church meetings is too loud and we're damaging our hearing? which we've seen with kind of a lot of rock and roll churches. And in fact, yeah, they are, um, you know, damaging the hearing of the parishioners wow. in cases. So uh, be aware for one. And two, uh, there's some simple things that we can do in the day to regulate our stress and kind of really take in and process what's happening in our environment. One is take a, uh, Five-minute sound quiet breaks in the morning and one in the afternoon, just where we kind of turn everything off. We quiet, find the quietest place that's nearby and meditate, um, do deep breathing exercises, just wind down, give ourselves an opportunity to de-stress, rest our ears, and come back to we, what we want to do. Um, some other strategies we can use are create playlists for our life consciously create the soundtrack of our day yeah so we can yeah. choose what we wake up to in the morning uh what we commute to uh what we play if we're playing sound to help enhance the work effect of whatever we're doing for our employment and music to transition when we're transitioning from work or school back into home and really using that as a transition and what kind of sound do we want to create in, it, in our home environment when we're with our family, um, when we want to relax. So there's a lot of tools that we can use to kind of build those playlists to uh, have a healthier uh, sound lifestyle. Yeah, wow, well, fascinating stuff. I love that idea, the, have a, the soundtrack for your day and the soundtrack for your life. Um, so uh, let's well let's expand on that just a bit. If we, you know, if for example, if someone who's think a lot of people would uh, would probably be interested in having, you know, more natural energy in the morning when they're when they're waking up. Is is there any anything you can uh, anything that the research or your experience would uh, would tell us about that? That's a great question. Uh, we you know we do a good job of this book plug in in healing at the speed of sound of actually teaching you how to how to do this. But we refer to three gears: first gear, second gear, and third gear. So first gear is kind of low and slow. Mm -hmm. So that is music of slower tempos, uh, generally under fifty to sixty beats per minute, mm -hmm. uh, that are very simple in their uh, arrangement, so they're not complex. It could be something like a solo guitar, a solo piano, a guitar and piano duo. Uh, kind of think of what you might experience on the massage table. Yes. That, that music is going to entrain your brain and body rhythms to slower rhythms. So the music is going to lower our heart rate, our resting heart rate. Uh, it's going to slow down our breathing, and it's going to begin to impact our brainwave activity to kind of slow us down and to calm us. So there's points where maybe we have stress or anxiety or we just need to wind down, uh, get prepared for a meeting that's coming up that may be stressful. Um, we go to the first gear, low and slow. You know, second gear is that kind of focus, focus and attention. And that is mid-range frequency sounds 
that are generally what we find, again, uh, most useful is instrumental music, in particular of the Baroque music genre. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Georgi Lazanov, who was a very well-known uh, teacher in Bulgaria of accelerated learning techniques, found that Baroque music tempoed 50 to 60 beats per minute was kind of ideal to dial in your alpha uh, state in the brain. Oh, wow. Um, so that's, that's getting you focused and, and attentive so you can pay selective attention to what you need to and block out distractions. So that's great while we're working, while we're studying, and we really need to be, you know, dialed in. Then we go to third gear. Those are higher frequencies, um, faster tempos. You know, we're, we're talking tempos 90 to 150 beats per minute. Um, some of the music we may use to... Um, do aerobic exercise when we're doing cardio, something that's up tempo. We entrain to faster body rhythms and get moving, just as I'm speaking a bit sure. faster now. Um, so that will get into a lot of rock, uh, hip hop, and, and things that get us up and get us moving or very stimulating classical music or a lot of percussion rhythm based uh, world music that might be uh, more, up, more up tempo and engaging. So you know, think about sonic sedatives and sonic caffeine. Yeah, yeah, I love right? that. I love so that. low and slow for the sedative and high frequency and fast for the caffeination to get our brain and our body moving. Oh, that's cool. I love that. No, sonic sedatives and sonic caffeine. That's cool. So, uh, you know, here's a, a related question that, uh, that, that, you know, people also might enjoy knowing. And that is, you know, we've all got our, our iPods or our MP3s, whatever, whatever. And then we go, we, you know, inevitably lose the, uh, lose or break the, uh, the ear, the earpieces, the earphones. Um, is there really, you know, there's so many different, then you go to the store and there's, you know, 20 or 30 different brands. Uh, is there any big difference in quality, uh, you know, I mean, where, where is it worthwhile to spend more money? That's a great, that's a great question. You know, most of what we do, Dan, is headphone delivered. And we, in our labs, we actually analyze headphones for frequency response at different volumes and to make sure that the frequency, the amplitude, the spatial characteristics of sound based on what we've produced, because we record in high definition sound, we create the finest quality music recordings that is really attainable and we want to preserve that so we're yes. especially attuned to it so uh, I happen to have a pair of headphones here and the first recommendation and a good guideline is spend at least a hundred bucks okay alright so that's something easy to recognize and get a headphone that's gonna cover the ears okay Okay, because the pinna, this outer portion of the ear that we um, can see, is a very important part of the listening process. And what we want is a headphone that cups around the pinna to really pick up all of the characteristics in the music and to give us some protection from the sound in our environment. And we can listen with a high quality headphone at lower volume than we can with others. Now, this is called a closed headphone. We use this in the studio when we're recording and editing music. Yeah. So this blocks out the sound in our environment. Forgive me one second. Sure. I'm gonna grab another set. Here, I have an open headphone that's for audiophile listening. Okay, okay so this is a, another brand little larger ear cups, different materials, but it's called an open air headphone. Right. And it allows some of the background sound to mix in with what you're experiencing, and that's good. And you get finer detail and spatial characteristics. Okay. So um, it's hard to go just off specifications, but those are my primary recommendations. Um, and buy a headphone that's for the purpose. You know, for example, the noi active noise cancellation headphones, which are great to block out ambient sound on a plane, but they're really not an audiophile headphone. You, yes. know, you can spend two, three, four hundred dollars on them, but for rich music listening experience, that wouldn't be my recommendation. I would go uh, more for the brands like AKG and, and Sennheiser, Grado, that do a great audiophile headphone. And then for therapeutic purposes, we actually manufacture our 
our own headphone system. Oh, so cool. we have oh, cool. a very specialized headphone that has a kind of standard headphones with a bone conduction vibrator uh, that's built into them. So we simultaneously send sound through the body while we're also listening to it connected, connected to a headphone amplifier that really increases the quality. Yeah. Um, so you can you can go to that extreme and you know so on the low end hundred dollars or more for a good audiophile type headphone you can spend as much as twenty thousand dollars believe it or not wow headphone system so there is a broad range but you know generally a hundred dollars to two hundred dollars you're going to have a great uh, listening experience wow fascinating stuff man I, you know Alex this is a lot of uh, I think a lot of new information for you know, for people who aren't in this field. And uh, so I really appreciate, you know, you making time for us. I know we're, so we're coming up on time. And, uh, uh, but just to, uh, just to, for one last question, if I might, um, if, if you were going to, if people were going to ask you um, to, to offer one piece of advice um, that, that would be, you know, in, out of everything you've learned over the last, you know, 40 something years of your life to, uh, to, to, to have a better to have better performance or a better lifestyle, um, what what would you add to what we've talked about? Well, um, I, I've reflected on this a lot lately, uh, as I I you know became a, a new dad five years ago, and I think at that stage uh, I was more overweight than I needed to be, um, fifty pounds overweight, wow. um, highly stressed. Uh, a lot of kind of symptomatic issues of a much older individual and it was at that point I decided to really make a, a life change and drop the weight, uh, adopt a very healthy eating lifestyle and to work on the work-life balance. Uh, as an entrepreneur who's been building a company for 18 years, uh, you tend to err to too much time in the office and not enough at home with family. And I reprioritized that. So the work-life balance came into play and more um, stress reduction techniques. Uh, if I boil it down to one thing, uh, it is to just be in the moment uh, be present uh, in whatever activity I'm engaged in, and that technique in and of itself and that practice uh, has no question improved my relationships, uh, my perspective, and my sense of well-being. Yeah, wow, that's powerful stuff. I'm with you. So, yeah, being present is uh, is powerful.